Hey, I'm back. Uh, so it would seem that my connection just straight up died. Apparently, there's been problems in the neighborhood. Problems in the neighborhood. Um, so hopefully, uh, people heard the, at least the last bit of the story that I was saying uh, or telling a little bit uh, earlier when I went live a few moments ago, uh, because this is part two. Uh, if you haven't checked out the first part of this live stream, it should be somewhere in the feed, I imagine. Um, so hopefully, if anyone comes in, you can let me know if you heard the last bit of that, because uh, my connection died and it was uh, pretty bad. I'm just trying to bring up the, because um, I saw there were some comments in the uh, the last uh, chat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can bring that uh, feed up or uh, video up or whatever, and uh, then I can, uh, here we go. Uh, am I with you guys? Can you hear me okay? Hello, I see there are three people here. Hello, I'm back. Uh, so I'm gonna read some comments just whilst people uh, show back up. Um, so Jeff Doty says, um, this sounds like one of the most badass fights ever. I'm gonna give this a watch. Definitely do, like it was a badass fight, but uh, to be honest with you, it wasn't so much, <laughs> it wasn't a fight. Uh, it was more of a, it was more of just a, you need to understand that there's no winning this. <laughs> Lloyd didn't have to say it, it was apparent. There was no winning it. There's no beating the Witch King Magma um, at our current stage and also we're not the correct gender. So we need to uh, retreat and the retreat, like that cost us, the whole thing cost us. We lost uh, two PCs and a highly important NPC in the battle. Um, and it, it, it just went to shit, <laughs> basically. Um, so, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, um, oh wait, have I missed a few? I think I've missed a few, haven't I? Um, oh, um, Baka says, um, <laughs> the Witch King basically is an evil bastard. <laughs> that was what I said, isn't it? Uh, and that make means that then you say you pull that straight out of, um, Adventures in Middle Earth Law Master Guide. I think that's what it means. Anyway, the comments are really messed up for this. Um, Oh, I see, because it, I'm, I'm reading it in reverse, that's why. Um, so then, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, the Witch King uh, has killed the live stream with a legendary action. He did, just with a legendary action. Um, yeah, and then Jeff says, oh man, he gives you the classic Lord of the Rings Deus Ex and then turns it aside into an even more brutal encounter. So sad and so fitting. Uh, of what I would expect from a Yarn game. Yeah, like um, me and Lloyd, it seems have obsessed him the whole Deus Ex for quite a, a little while. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's... Um, <laughs> we both have tried to sort of um, subvert it in our own way with our recent games anyway. Um, I can see some people have joined me. Uh, so uh, Caius says, um, heard up to the death of Gan... <laughs> Yeah, um, Caius, I put like a spoiler warning uh, on the first one, uh, and there's a, well, I think most people watching this will be from the previous stream, basically spoilers from it against the shadow yesterday, people died, if you don't want to know, go and watch it, but uh, I've already talked about it on another stream now, so... <laughs> But uh, this is going to lead me into the second part of the stream, which was talking about character death. And I think the main thing that hit me so hard, you can watch that session and you'll see for the majority of it, I'm like this. Because <laughs> I, uh, I I, was quite like, it, it, it got to me because not only was it thanks to my character's decision that and that landed us in this situation, genuinely, genuinely, it, was, it is the fault of my character that three people died. Um, so not only that, but from a player's point of view, from an, uh, from just like an outside perspective, uh, these are characters, uh, obviously with the, the big NPC, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
I've already said it, Gandalf. With the death of Gandalf, that's big. You know, that's huge. Um, but then two characters that we've got to know over 16 sessions just killed like that, you know. And it was very fitting because Syrian went out uh, fighting. Uh, no, sorry, Syrian went out uh, definitely fighting, but like uh, Syrian's last action was to go and try and help, to try and heal Nar, basically, to try and patch him up, which was uh, indicative to Syrian's behavior from the get go, always wanting to help, always trying to help put people back together and to make people's lives a bit better. God, I'm getting emotional <laughs> talking about it. Um, but uh, whew, um, yeah, the that was just it was it was fitting because like that's that's what Syrian would have done, and he did, did it, and it cost him. Like the Witch King has no thought for compassion or for helping others, uh, and because of that, he was able to take full advantage of that and just kill Syrian. Uh, and uh, the legendary warrior Nar was killed, um, admittedly, like in a combat, but didn't really have much of a chance. It's not like Nar went down fighting a bunch of people and then got overwhelmed and got like a few good digs in. No, Nar just got battered. Nar got frozen, like paralyzed, battered, stabbed, and then dropped off an edge and then like hit by like the furious power of the Witch King that surrounds the tower. It was so impersonal. It was so cold. Like it was so, and the fact that we didn't even know like how he actually died. Like we, we, our characters forever and ever will consider his death to have been from being dropped off the tower, not being. We didn't know that he'd like had a chance and saved himself. Maybe if we'd known that, that something could have happened. Unlikely, it was in the same round. But um, no, it wasn't actually. It was a round later, so we could we could have helped him. Unlikely, but there could have been something. But. My point is, is that character death is obviously like a big deal, especially when it's with characters that um, that you've been, uh, you know, around for a long time and you you're, you you know them. Like I know Syrian, I know Nah, like I I know them, like I know how they'd react to certain things. I know how like they'd be, how they react in other situations. I I, I know I knew their personalities. Like they were fully formed, really cool three dimensional characters that had really good motives. Like had like just good personality to them, you know. And uh, they both went out doing what they did best. It's just that it was cruel and without fanfare, and that made it so much worse. <laughs> it made it so much worse that they went out in. And all power, and all praise to Lloyd. Like it was a fantastic session. Like it really was. It was breathtaking, and I had like a knot in my stomach from the very beginning. And it didn't help that we'd had like such a huge break to build up to this session. Like that made it worse. Like it, to the point where we were like we're facing the Witch King, and we all knew. We all knew going in. We were like, this probably isn't going to go very well. Um. It didn't make it easier though at all. It felt like the the, the horrible thing was it felt like an an inevitability. Uh, so for those of you who still think that Lord of the Rings is not a grim dark setting, then yeah, I would I would argue that every turn. Um, now, uh, this is my point that I wanted to make uh, a point that has been laboured, but I wanted to tell you guys the story because even if you're not going to go and watch it, you should know the story of how Syrian and Nar and Gandalf fell in the against the shadow continuity. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's not great. So I'm just being distracted by some of the comments. Uh, Taylor says yep to what Kaya said and then Kaya says no spoilers please I've already given a spoiler warning so if you if you have been watching this then I apologize but you know go and watch it anyway because it's well worth the watch Michael Kennedy then says ah so you faced my common pain Rob not so fun to murder players who ought to know better is it um that's the thing, that's the really cruel thing about it, is that they, in the defense of the party in general, 
we didn't know that the Witch King was up there. We didn't know that it was the Witch King that was in Fornost, in character or as the players. You know, there was no meta gaming going on. There was no foreknowledge. We thought we were going there because Faroth was going to uh, appease the ancestral wraiths that had terrorized him as a child. Basically, that that was the thing that we were going to do. Uh, we didn't know that um, he was up there. And the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, the the uh, the Heralds, that's the name of the party, uh, the Heralds had uh, gone up against Ringwraiths before. Uh, a long-running villain in this campaign, the Black Numenorian, had, uh, was accompanied by a few Ringwraiths. And although we didn't beat them, we outlasted them in a dramatic confrontation atop Weathertop, which was pretty rad. Um, so, you know, like... As much as, like, we ought to have known better maybe not to go into Fornost, we couldn't have known the magnitude of what we were walking into. And, uh, yeah, Lloyd did it. Lloyd did it. He he went ahead and he, he, he didn't show us any mercy, nor should he have. Um, he used the, uh, the wonderful uh, um, technique of showing up with a, a deus ex as it often does happen in lord of the rings you know the eagles often show up and save people's asses but you know what people were saved by that but people also died because it happened too late which made it worse and it means that yeah um we lost gandalf um now, whether the thing that usually happens with Gandalf still works <laughs> in this continuity, I don't know. But uh, it's safe to say that even if Gandalf isn't gone forever, it's safe to say that Nar and Siri are. And they went out in a horrible way, stamped on the ground and chucked off a tower. You know, There's no heroic last stand there. It was just butchery. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Yeah, Lord of the Rings. Uh, sorry, this is Lionel. And he says, "Yeah, Lord of the Rings is grim, dark as it is. It really is. Like even if you look at films, like you can see it everywhere. Like it's so much misery, you know, so much slaughter. Like just because the Fellowship get out doesn't mean like hundreds and hundreds of people don't get slaughtered, you know, at Helm's Deep on the Battle of Pelennor Fields or in Osgiliath, you know, or the." Uh, <laughs> The Wilderlands or Rohan, you know, as Isengard sweep across it, like so many people just get butchered, you know, just because the heroes don't doesn't mean that everyone else doesn't, you know, there's so many people, people are starving. It's grim dark. Kaya says Lloyd would make my little pony grim dark. <laughs> Rainbow Dash would just be like, um, <laughs> shades <laughs> shades dash i did i did i didn't have a joke prepared sorry you know that that wasn't very good at all i have to work on my my little pony ad libs um <laughs> in the meantime lionel then says i was listening to this game and kept telling you guys to run well we i was trying this is my point lionel like faroth was trying to get us a way out of there the only way out was to go across to the other tower that was his plan it just happened that, that plan took a round to set up and by the end of that round it was too late so I don't think it was anything, we didn't do anything stupid on our part other than walk into Fornost in the first place. Um, yeah, we, uh, yeah, that we, we did, I did my best. And I blame myself as a player. I blame myself, uh, Faroth blames himself as a character. Like, it is genuinely down, although admittedly, not, not, not like pushing the blame onto anyone too much, but Caius did suggest it, so... I won't say that at the funeral. Uh, but, uh, yeah, and that's the other sad thing. The other sad thing is that we only retrieved one body. We only retrieved Syrian. Nah. Nope. Nothing left of him, I'm afraid. We, we didn't get him. We didn't grab him. We didn't... Nope. So that's even worse. Sometimes you come back and you don't bring them with you, even if they did uh, lose their lives. Which is a shame. Uh, Lionel then says, La, yeah, he would, Caius, he would, yeah. L Lionel then says, Fornost is the dead kingdom. Uh, we knew, we knew the dead were there, definitely. Um, and we'd faced 
whites before and we'd faced um wraiths before um and the whole point of going to the dead kingdom was to ally themselves with the fallen men of arnor to help liberate gundabad that was the plan we knew that the dead were there but we didn't know that the witch king was there also i don't think we probably would have known we probably would have heard i think we'd heard legends of the witch king so we knew who he was when he revealed himself but we we didn't know he was there how could we have you know um and then michael kennedy says oh a lloyd game i should have known yeah yeah, I mean, you say that, like, like, Lloyd obviously runs very brutal games, and, you know, a lot of people die in Lloyd's games, but um, it, to give him his due, like, this is a long-running campaign. Uh, I think he's in one of the longest he's run. Uh, and that was two pivotal player characters killed in one round of combat. Well, no, on what? In a, in a combat. Two two players died. The two players, two player characters died. And I was saying, like, like I said, that there was no fanfare to it, which made it worse, which is something that I think should be considered in uh, games. Like, I think a lot of people say, oh, I want to, if I go out, I want to go out like this or whatever, blah, blah, blah. But the reality of the situation is, is that you don't get to choose. <laughs> you don't get to choose how you go. And it's a very morbid topic. Like, so just so you know, like I am aware, obviously, it's a very serious topic, just death in general. So I'm, I'm talking about role-playing games, but the truth still remains that you don't, get to choose how you go especially if you're throwing yourselves into combats every other day you know like if you're fighting things all the time with swords eventually something's gonna get you um so uh yeah and it was it was an incredibly emotional session um and uh, i i found myself as a player unable to make any comment when we were escaping on the back of the eagle um not only had we uh not only had faroth cost uh this had cost uh, two of the player characters' lives. It also meant that the person Gandalf trying to save us also died, um, and we uh, we came away from Fallen with nothing, which means they died for nothing. <laughs> they died. They, they died for nothing. They died for nothing, um, which is is dreadful. But as much as it's dreadful, it's also incredibly poignant, and it will mean that I will never. I will never forget Syrian and I will never forget Nar. Like I wasn't going to anyway, but the fact that their their death was so mm. it wasn't even though it was out of nowhere, like I was saying earlier, it was the inevitability of it. And then this is what I wanted to talk about, really. I mean, there's not much more to say other than like I think that as much as we we like the idea of there being the heroic last stand. You know, the dice will fall or the dice will fall, you know. Uh, and uh, I think in the long run, that's a better way to look at it than engineering a, a, a more heroic death, you know, maybe. If it happens, it happens, you know. But, uh, yeah, it was pretty It was pretty rough. Like, I finished that session and I... I, I um, <laughs> I was uh, I was genuinely emotional. I didn't I couldn't speak. I was just like, there you go. And I I, I actually once the stream ended, I, I was like I said to both Jay and Dennis, I was like, guys, are you all right? Like, are you okay? Because like, you know, different people react differently to character deaths. Like, and this is these are characters that I know that both of them had grown attached to in some way, and both of them have had character deaths before because we were talking about it afterwards, but. Um, yeah, it just, it, oof, like, it was very poignant, very powerful, and it was just, yeah, it just happened. It's just the luck of the draw. And it makes me think to myself, well, is there anything that we could have done differently? Um, like, could we have all, like, just rounded our shoulders and fought him and somehow pushed him back? Like, Nar was trying to push him over the edge at one point, but he wasn't having it. The Witch King was not having it. Like, he could just say no and decide to succeed on certain saves, like some powerful NPCs can, uh, which I think is a rad thing to do in a way. Like, some some people you can't just push. And the Witch King is definitely one of those. Um, so, I mean, the, the last thing I wanted to do is just talk to you guys about 
what characters else have you experienced? Like, have there been any that you feel would have been better if it happened in another way? Or are you gen generally accepting of if it just happens by chance and you just get unlucky, then yeah, so be it. This is a subject that's been brought up quite a lot and that's why I wanted to tell the story because I, um, I think the situation was the important thing. It's all right walking away from a game and saying, oh, well, my character died. But I think the worst thing about, the, the thing that's worse about it is why they died. And it's because of decisions made by other characters, by my character and Beric and, and Caius's character <laughs> to a lesser extent. But yeah. So yeah, that's that's that. And I would urge you to go and check out Against the Shadow because it is a highly enjoyable game. I mean, that that is obviously a low point. Uh, and there have been many low points in the campaign, but none, sadly, as low as this. Uh, and yeah there's there's a cost there's always a cost there's always a cost to uh to uh being an adventurer as there should be as i often say as i continually say until i'm red in the face and everyone gets really bored of me saying there should always be uh that risk because if there isn't that risk then there's no point in rolling those die you know there's no point you might as well just sit around and tell a story you know there has to be an element of risk for there to be drama and tension and there was drama and tension aplenty so uh i'm gonna have a puff and a sip of tea um but let me know how your characters died and was it because was it anyone else's fault as well uh or did you bring it on yourself or uh, was it an accident like i've seen characters die because of accidents like and that's the worst like, at least, they, you know, as much as terrible as it was, at least Syrian and Nar going down, at least they can say they went down fighting, like, the Witch King. The, the arguably the most powerful uh, being in Middle-earth. Sauron, obviously, not technically being in Middle-earth in corporeal form. You know what I mean? Like, he's the one that's, like, out there. The Witch King is the most powerful on, on Middle-earth. Um, so, at least they can say that. They went down fighting the best of the best. It took the best of the best to stop them, which, you know. As deaths go, memorable as well. Like I say, I don't think I'm ever going to forget fighting on top of that tower. Um, oh. I'm an idiot. There's loads and loads and loads of comments, and I just haven't been scrolling down. Idiot. So anyway. Jeff Doty says, Fornos was the capital of Arnor before the Witch King took it down. Also place to have a massive showdown. Yes, <laughs> I know it's the capital of Arnor, and that's why we thought, well, if the fallen, disgraced dead of Arnor join our cause to liberate Gundabad, then yes. Sadly, he didn't realize the Witch King was there. Uh, Kaya says, yes, I haven't been arguing with you saying it was your fault that Fornos was Beragon's I know, man, I'm, I'm, I'm just messing around. Um, Farrell made the call, though, which, and yeah, so it is his fault. Beragon had a flight of fancy. That's all. That's all the that's all the Beragon can be blamed of. And disobeying a direct order on top of that tower, Caius. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um Beragon did uh Faroth was telling him not to go not to do it, not to go and get Syrian because it was too late. Because he didn't want Beragon to get killed as well. But Beragon pulled it off and retrieved Syrian, which fair play, you know, shows what I know. Lionel then says, you guys were on borrowed time and did well to make it that far without death. I think we were. There were a lot of situations where we got super lucky. Like, as everyone in this community knows, like, Lloyd doesn't really pull punches. Like, even, <laughs> even as much as he likes this campaign, he still, like, guns for us at every opportunity. And we'd done, we had done very well. Um, but, yeah, that combat was literally just like a ticking clock. It really was. 
Jeff Hardy then says, I like that Lloyd doesn't often give super heroic final moments. It makes it sting even more when you die without glory. It feels more real to me. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the Game of Thrones thing, isn't it? Like it's, it's you know, people die in ways, like people that, you know, you want people to kill certain other people, like you say for it, I don't know. Um, say you want Arya or Rob Stark to go and kill Joffrey. That's not how he kind of dies, you know. <laughs> you know, even if it's a bad person dying, like it's not the way you want it to happen. Uh, so when it's a good person, like not great. It is great, but it hurts. It stinks, as you quite rightly say, Jeff. Carson says, I thought for a while that I wanted my character to go out in an epic way, but I don't want to lose the chance uh, of dying to trivia. <laughs> You'll you'll always have that chance, man. You'll always have that chance. You trip over your bootlaces, <laughs> fall down a well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at least they are now safe in the fact that they know they went out like in a poignant moment. As long as they were heroic, it was a heroic moment. They were both being heroes at the point that they died. It's just it was brutal, and you know. Jeff Doe then says, also, it makes the glorious moments shine all the better when uh, when they're a rare contrast to the usual quick and brutal death. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, eesh, yeah, like I really didn't want, I didn't want anyone to die. Like, honestly, I didn't want anyone to die and I really didn't want my character to die. Um, but even I, I had to charge him. Faroth couldn't, couldn't stand by anymore and watch all of his friends die and not at least try and make a difference and he didn't he didn't he him but he didn't make a difference kaius then says uh that was my second epic pc death of the weekend oh that sounds cool man i'd like to hear about the other uh jeff then says uh, my character in lloyd's hunted game was literally beheaded in a single attack before he took a turn in the initiative it added to the complete brutality that entire session had shown so well yeah uh, Dennis says, some escape to continue spreading the word. Yes, that's one detail I forgot to mention at the very beginning of the combat because Nar went first. Nars had this thing, and if you know the against the, I keep calling it against the shadow. In my mind, that setting should be, the, the game should be called against the shadow because that's all the adventures of Middle Earth is in my mind. It's against the shadow because it's so all encompassing. It is so Middle Earth. It is the comprehensive Lord of the Rings game, and I feel honored to play in it. Um, but in that rule book, um, there are lots of different bonds and flaws and things that you, you know, that your different characters have, whatever, like in fifth edition of D and D and Dennis, uh, Dennis's, uh, character, Nah basically had this thing where he, he knew that his death was coming. Like, that's the thing, like he was doomed to die or something. I can't remember the name of it, but, um, Nar's always known that he was never going to make it, which makes it even worse in a way. He like knew it was going to happen. So Nar, before the combat even starts, looks over uh, to Faroth, looks him right in the eyes and smiles and says, the message needs to go out. Or the message needs to get out. The message needs to be continued to spread like against, the, like we need to rally against the shadow because that's been their mission from the very beginning. Uh, or let's say the very beginning, like, that's been their mission for a long time is to unite against the shadow. And that was like, no, that was the last thing that he said to Farrah. It's it, it really gets me, man. Like it really gets to me. Like I feel like I've been through like an ordeal, which is so stupid because <laughs> like it's a game. Come on. It's a game. But it's a game that we've tied our emotions to. It's something that we're invested in. Like, we're upset when our favourite characters die in film and television or books and stuff. The same goes for role-playing games. Um, I'm not making a little of it by saying it's just a game, but it does It does get to me. It did get to me that, like, and it was a, a wonderful way, in a way, to the last thing for him to say. There was no, like, accusation <laughs> in, in, in Nar's expression. It was just like keep doing the good work Kaya says uh, in DM's uh, Death's uh, Lost Minds of uh, Fandelva uh, Tannis met an incubus the player, the Isle of Goats knew it was an incubus but the character didn't, though immune to charm the GM roleplayed so convincingly that she accepted the kiss that killed her 
The only roll in it, in all of it, was a failed insight roll against the incubus to detect sinister intention. There you go. When it when it's coming and you know it and you feel it's right, sometimes it is better just to go. Yeah, that's that. And I hope one day I'll have the courage to know when that moment arrives for Faroth because I think we're all pretty much going that way eventually. I would love to say that they're going to succeed and make it to the very end. And maybe they will make it to the end, but 